What's been happening in the SEO world recently? Uh, just been working through a few different updates and things. Um, but yeah, aside from that, just business as usual, which is good. Mm. Um, yeah, nothing too special. Mm. What are <laughs> yeah. some of the changes that are um, kicking in? Uh, that, well, there was one change that's probably quite applicable to e-commerce where Google is removing a legacy feature from the search console, um, which was basically a lot of people were using it to prevent the bot from um, crawling through different like filters and sorts through their website and getting stuck in like what's called an infinite redirect loop or a spider trap, I guess is another way to put it, um, where the bot decides and sees these links like, oh shit, I can filter it by blue. Oh wow, I can filter it by green. Oh wow, I can filter it by red. Holy hell, I can go from like price ascending, price descending, you know, all that type of thing. And then it just goes on and on in a loop and it just gets stuck and use this quota for the day and then it's gone and it doesn't get to see the rest of your site. Wow. It's so interesting when you look at the whole SEO game, how much it's changed over time and how different it is to what it used to be back in the day where you could literally shove a hundred keywords onto one page and not make any sense at all. And yet that would take you to page one of Google. And now you've got to be so smart and, and careful with your on page and off page optimization and also just with testing stuff as well. Um, is that something that sort of you saw in your time when you first started with SEO or was that before you sort of came into the game? Yeah. So like I got in probably after the two major updates, which were like Panda and Penguin, um, they always have weird names, but they were like the major ones that just wiped out a lot of the spam. Um, so I kind of got in where I didn't have to learn a lot of the bad habits, but I could learn from a lot of their mistakes and pick up from that. And, and, you know, obviously I still want to test things and make sure that like some, cause sometimes old stuff comes back when they make updates and then it works again, then it doesn't. So I like testing that stuff out. Um, but yeah, like it, it's definitely changed over time. Um, I guess like anything, the, like even in ads, things get more advanced and everyone ups their game. So you've got to go kind of follow along and keep up to date really. Mm. How do you keep up to date with all the SEO changes going on? Um, I'm quite lucky I've developed like a very good network of people that I know. Um, so if I don't hear about something, they will, and then I will. <laughs> um, and alongside that, I'm always just researching and like trying to stay up to date with whatever comes out that people are talking about. So um, I, I love it. So it doesn't bother me. So I just, I'm always researching and learning. So mm. that's how I stay up to date. Mm -hmm. It's actually quite fun and exciting, I guess, when you get to sort of read some of these updates and changes and, you know, apply them before a lot of other people do, because particularly living in New Zealand, there's quite a good opportunity actually to really just implement what some of these, you know, bigger companies and advanced companies are implementing right now with, with a lot of their clients. And I think with your journey in particular, yeah. like you didn't grow up saying I'm going to be an SEO person. You, you actually wanted to be something else altogether. Was that right? Yeah, that's right. Like, um, I originally was, um, studying music and got out of that to like, go ahead and start teaching and everything like that. Um, so I had no marketing background, no, like SEO, you can't study SEO or you couldn't at the time. Um, and yeah, so like I started up all of that, got my own website and basically had to learn how to market that and the success from that showed like kind of got me more interested in it and like i realized that i could do it and i could do it quite well and then i started repeating those results across like friends and family websites and stuff like that and then yeah just went from there what were some of the things that you did early on to start getting your website ranking um higher up the the google food chain probably everything completely wrong <laughs> at, the, <laughs> at the start. Like, you know, I, I was like learning from YouTube and like just random blogs. Like I still do now, but obviously more reputable places. Um, but
but yeah, just anything really. Like I, I was literally just someone would say do something and I would do it. Like I would just try it out. Um, and that's kind of, I, I still kind of like that approach even today, but I don't do that on like a client site or anything. I'd have test sites to try things out that I haven't done before. Um, and if it breaks, who cares? Cause you still learn something. Mm. Um, and that's, that's how I learned like my fire. <laughs> yeah. So how many test sites do you have at the moment that you're sort of trying things out on? Uh, I don't like keep a huge amount, but I've got like one or two that are mostly just playing around with for affiliate stuff. Um, there's a couple more that I take seriously. Yeah. What's um, with, with Google SEO, what are the common mistakes that businesses are making at the moment with like the SEO work that they do? And like, what are some of the common guess so easy fixes that they can make in order to get their website ranking a little better? Uh, a lot of it is just like some basic understanding um, around like just learning how, how to read data um, and how to figure out what your like metrics are in terms of like your KPIs. Um, most people associate SEO with ranking high. Yeah, that's cool. But also it wants to be met, you want to make money from it and you want to get leads. So that's something that people tend to forget about. They get so caught up and I need to rank for this one keyword. Whereas like maybe if they just put a bit more effort into what their goals are and you know, you can get some other wins in other ways. Um, it's, it's a little bit tricky because it involves a bit of research, but, um, you know, it's not, it's not like you don't have to go do a marketing degree to understand it. Um, there's some basic spreadsheets that you can do to work out like traffic estimates, what your average, like lifetime value of a customer is and what your average conversion rate is. And then once you notice, start to understand some of these numbers, it's like with anything for ads or even ads. Um, once you know some of those numbers, you can start to get an idea of what you can expect from that in terms of results and like, okay, once you have your numbers, here's the estimated amount of traffic I can get, expect to get when I rank number one. So I should be able to invest this amount and get this in return. That's actually a really good point there because with ranking for keywords, it's, it's great and stuff, but if it's, you know, you've got a business that is selling, uh, for example, like fences and fencing, and you're just trying to rank for, um, how to, how to paint your fence effectively. It's, it's not really going to carry you to that next level as opposed to, you know, fencing installers, fencing, um, fences near me and that's and those sorts of keywords and even with like google ads and facebook ads i've seen there's been a quite a big shift recently towards more um i guess direct ad copy seems to be working quite well because i think a lot of so many people are just over the fact that they're being given this wishy-washy introduction here and there they just a lot of the time now they just want to know what they're getting and and kind of what the price is even if they're not that type of personality um are you finding it's the same with seo or do you find that sort of you have to kind of go a little heavier with the descriptions um once you've got those initial keywords yeah like i mean in a lot of, in a lot of like trade industries it's it's fairly straightforward what your like money keywords are going to be it's typically like you know like builders in city like kind of thing like builders Auckland, builders Christchurch, builders Wellington, that type of thing. Um, and so then it's just, you, you've got your head topic and then your subtopics below that, which are also going to help make more money as you expand upon the different services that you provide. Um, and it, yeah, in terms of like the, what people are expecting, like you, yeah, you, Google, you, you've got a balance between what a human is, like expecting to see and also what Google is hoping to see as well. So you, like it's a little, kind of a little bit different to ads where you can just kind of put up whatever you want on a page to try and just optimize for conversions for a human. But with um, like with organic SEO, you've obviously also got to take into consideration that Google is also wanting to provide the best result as well. So it's, it's a little bit of a balancing act, but um, yeah, I have, I have noticed that, um, you can cut a lot of the like crap, a lot of the fluff, and you can still, 
you know, get some good wins as well in terms of both like rankings and conversions. Hmm. Meta titles, meta, meta descriptions. Can you just run through what those are? Um, so when you Google something, you have a list of results that display um, the basically the, the title and then there's a description for each of these results. That's the meta title and the meta description and, and a basic summary. Um, and they don't have a huge impact on rankings, but um, they're the first thing that someone sees when they make a search. So you want to make sure that they're relevant and they're interesting. And again, it's finding that balance between standing out and increasing clicks while also making, making the result something that Google would favor. Hmm. And then of course, we've obviously got on-page optimization and off-page optimization. Um, maybe just give us a quick rundown on how those two things impact rankings and um, what some of the best practices are for both of them. Yeah, sure. Um, so on-page and off-page, basically what we're talking about here is on-page is everything that you do on a website, on a web particular page for that website that you're trying to rank in Google. Um, and what you want to do is basically, if you think about it, like writing an essay, you have the head topic, which is the head keyword or keyword topic that you're wanting to rank for. And then you basically go beyond that. So you have your subheadings and sub content below that. Um, if you keep it structured like that, and then you read the headings, basic, it's a good way to um, create a good page is to just cut out everything and just read the headings. And if you can understand what the page is about by reading the headings, then it's likely that Google will also understand it as well. Um, and then below that, don't worry about writing SEO content, just write content that is like, it makes sense. And, you know, it, you can include some keywords or related topics to that keyword. Um, but most people, when they try to write for SEO, they tend to just overdo it and make it like just spammy as hell without really, you know, taking into consideration humans as well. Mm. Um, so that's like a really basic, um, on page thing. You also want to look at like page elements. So like, it's not just about headings. It's not just about paragraphs of text. You want to like break up those paragraphs into tinier, you know, like for, basically small paragraphs because when they're read on like mobile phones, they're not huge chunks of text. Um, you also can use images, videos, different types of lists, um, internal linking. There's so many things that you can go that can go into an on-page um, setup that just help provide Google with more information and provide users with a better experience as well. Um, and off page is everything you do off your website to um, influence your rankings. And when we talk about off page, the most common thing people associate with that is link building. And that's true. Most people may not may or may not know what that is. But if you think of your website, like the hub of your brand, it's basically building out your brand across the web. So making sure that other websites know and are referencing your brand and citing it and that you have your like social media profiles and everything else built out as well. Awesome. Can you just tell us a bit more about, I guess, your business and like the types of people that you tend to work with, um, in terms of companies? Yes. Yeah, sweet. So, um, I, I work with a lot of like tradies as well. Um, it's mostly because they, the value is there for SEO for them. Um, like their leads are quite high take, ticket usually. So, um, you know, it doesn't take many leads for them to be making money off SEO, which is good. Um, whereas if you're like a small, like you're selling, I don't know, like cups, the cups are just like so low cost that you've got to sell the whole huge amount of volume for it to be profitable and the amount of work that goes into that generally you've got to be spending a lot on ads already and have quite an established profile for SEO to be uh, like a worthwhile investment upfront um, and aside from that it's mostly just I like 
I like companies that are like have a lot of demand. So um, where there's a lot of people searching for it in Google. Um, and I also do consulting for like other marketing companies and web design companies and stuff like that too. Awesome. Is there a particular method that you have to keeping customers happy? Because I had a look at your Google um, business profile last time, um, first time we tried doing this. Yep. And you had a solid five star review, not a single four star, three star, just all five stars. Like, what is it that you do to keep customers happy and, you know, keep keep that sort of relationship uh, strong? Yeah, sure. Um, so a lot of that is also coming down to picking the right clients that are suitable um, because you don't want to set expectations too high and then under deliver if you pick the wrong client or you get into the wrong industry where there's no demand, that type of thing. Um, so I want to make sure that I can deliver results before I take someone on. Um, and that's like a lot of what has gone into um, making it work. Um, and then beyond that is just making sure we have the right um, understanding around what is a good, like what does success look like? Um, and that most of the time is leads and sales. So we basically just work towards getting that. And once that happens, then it's, it, it's basically easy from there. That's really good because I think at the screening process, some people can be a little over eager and take on more than they can uh, chew, uh, so to speak, because yep. there's some very big companies that blew up exponentially and like they still go now with rather large numbers of clients and you know there'll be a lot of them like say 70 percent that they will deliver very good work for but then there'll be the 30 percent that will be very unhappy and underwhelmed and being in a country like new zealand which is reasonably small news spreads quickly about those sorts of stories um, so it's really good to see that you've you know more focused on delivering that result and putting the customer um first and making sure that they can get that outcome rather than just signing everybody up that you can find. Yeah. Um, are, are you also, um, have you got people in your team that sort of um, help you out? Because obviously it sounds like you've got quite a lot of work on. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got like, we're not a huge team, but we've got um, like four or five people um, that just do various parts of SEO and also web design as well, because we're, um, kind of building out that as a um, other project as well um, because like we yeah we, we just like see that as an opportunity and we're we know how to market ourselves so we're just building that out as a different project as well um, so yeah I've got I've got like four or five people helping me out um, and yeah it's mostly just making sure that everything's running smoothly because how many type how many things and rank and factors go into an seo score because i was talking to a friend a while ago that you know kind of blew my mind with a number of factors that there are but obviously there's only like about half a dozen that sort of can really move the needle but there's also a lot of other ones that you know may have some impact but not a significant one yeah sure so like a long time ago google announced that they use up to about 200 ranking factors. Um, but with like the community that I'm in, we've tested over like 2,800 um, factors. And so across the board, some of the strongest correlating factors have been all of the factors. So diversity of factors. So if you focus on one thing, like this thing works, I like this, I'm gonna do it. That can only, you can hit a certain point where that starts doing nothing. So, and, and then when you start building up some of these other elements on your page and start doing a few more things, then you start to notice the results happen. So, um, it's, it's a little bit difficult to say there's one or a few things that work really well and you should do them because it's also dependent on what market you're in, what competition levels and all of that as well. Um, but yeah, definitely in diversity of factors. So do all of as many things as you can to the site to make it as good as it can be um, is 
the most important thing you can do. Mm. So if you had like a list of three things that someone who's just getting started out in SEO could do to start moving the needle, what would those three things be? The first thing I'd say is learn what the factors are and start doing them all. What's one example? Like, are you talking like Google Business Profile or something else? Yeah. So, okay. So, an example would be obviously links. Um, so, start building links, um, which is one of one of the most important things you can do. Um, then, okay. So, then you've got like to understand the topic that you're trying to rank for. So, if it's like builders in Auckland, then okay, what goes into that? So, there's builders. Auckland, and then you can put in construction and a whole lot of different other related keywords and build up your a cluster of topics that would be suitable to go on that page and then start adding images. Make sure that you've got a building related image. That's a factor. Make sure you've got a, a video if you can. That's another factor. Make sure you've got a list which includes some of these topics. That's another factor. Make sure you've got different subheadings that include different topics around that keyword. That's another factor. Um, have you got social media profiles on your website? That's another factor. Are you implementing schema markup on your site, which is structured data? That's another factor. Um, are keywords included? That can be another factor. Um, how fast is your site? That's another factor. Where is the site hosted? That's another So it just goes on and on. So. Mm. <laughs> Interesting you mentioned website. That always seems to make a huge difference to just someone's experience in general. As, as to whether or not they're going to convert because no one's going to wait around for 15, 20 seconds for some humongous page to, to load up, are they? Yep. You know, they're going to want something within five seconds or at the very most um, 5.5 seconds. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like we've done testing around that and the, like the increase in ranks doesn't really improve much when you get under I think it was like either 1.5 seconds or two seconds. So like trying to get it as fast as you can is good because it's going to help increase conversions, but it's not going to um, increase rankings after a certain point. Um, but yeah, it's definitely important. How do you see SEO tying into other types of um, advertising, particularly like with paid advertising? Uh, it's definitely um, very helpful. Um, I would say don't rely on one thing. So it's always good to like, you know, just diversify your, um, marketing efforts. So whether that's paid ads, they can, they can obviously help get you, get your foot in the door, get some money coming in get some leads happening. And then you can also, uh, combine that with organic rankings, which can then also, you know, just help increase your brand exposure across the web. And it's a lot more long-term and sustainable. Um, once you hit those rankings at the top, um, and then obviously you can start building up retargeting lists through organic traffic and, and that type of stuff as well. Mm, that's a great point, Kyle. Um, especially with, I think if you had a, a solid ranking with a Google business profile or Google, my business, as it used to be known, uh, yep. you're showing up in the top three in the SEO and your ads are showing up in the top three. Like I think your chances of actually capturing that potential target market are absolutely enormous. And if you're retargeting to them on platforms like YouTube and uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter and TikTok and all these other places, then like you've kind of really just got yourself an omnipresent, um, omnipresent, you know, approach that's, you know, going to help you win in the long term because a lot of other people might just drill down into one or two particular areas. But if you're going um, a lot harder, um, everywhere, then, you know, it's, it's a good approach. And even though it may annoy some people, it's ultimately, you know, in the interests of your, your own customer, getting them um, in front of people that want to see what services and products they have to offer. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, we've, we've noticed it big time, like, even back when I was getting started, we could get away with a lot more, like, we took over the front page, literally, of Google, like we had 10 results ranking and then we started doing ads as well and we could kind of compare which performed the best um and yeah you, you start to notice the importance of like multi like just using different forms of, of marketing as well um once you have like all the data in front of you so um, 
Kyle, where can people get in touch with you if they need help with SEO? Um, just on my website, like hyperweb.co.nz or just reach out to me on Facebook or LinkedIn or anything like that. Cool. And we'll include links to Kyle's website and social media pages in the description box below. Kyle, thanks so much, man. Awesome. Cheers.